Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today I'm going to do a very simple painting, very quickly, without any cuts. We're just going to go through it as fast as we can. All right, get started here. I don't have any time to waste. So I've got my two inch brush. Uh, I've got some blue. You can see I've mixed up several colors. I'll tell you more about that as we go. I've got some clear Joe. Yeah, I can't talk today. That's okay. Just probably want to just probably get ready for that, right? <laughs> Anyway, I've got some clear gel and white over the sky and just some simple clear gel over the bottom area. That's generally something I don't recommend doing. What it'll do is it'll speed up the painting process. Today, that's a very good thing. Normally, it makes it much more difficult, and today is, you know, of course, going to make it much more difficult, but at least it'll be quick. I'm going to sacrifice um, a lot of the, you know, steps to make things easy to make it quick. You usually won't get them both at the same time. Okay, set that brush down, grab a filbert brush and scrub in a cloud or two. Don't need a whole lot, <laughs> just a few and that is really fun. This is one of those times where you kind of get to just let it go and kind of go a little crazy. Now, what I'll do is I'll take a shop towel and wipe this area off because I've got so much slippery paint down here that I could never paint my mountain. Okay, save that towel. I may want it. I've got a limited number that I've went ahead and ripped off. So if I run out, I'm going to stop and rip them and I'm still going to be on the time crunch. So there you go. Soft little sky. That's all you need. Quick and easy. Painless little sky. Okay. Filbert brush. And these colors are pretty much just random. I just mixed up a few colors I thought I might want. I'm going to go ahead and take a little time to put in some mountain peaks back here. I don't know how many of you guys have, have been around this long, but way back toward the beginning, I did a painting just, you know, with a very similar idea. No cuts, I just ran through it as quick as I could. And this is actually inspired from that. The composition isn't, the idea of it is, I gotta stop talking and paint. <laughs> so anyway, I've got, I've got a stopwatch right here telling me how slow I'm going. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna go as fast as I can without, you know, driving you guys crazy that I'm, and I'm rushing. There. I'll clean up any little issues as we go. Rub those mountains. Good. Today it's very important to control the paint on the canvas. Here's some white. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create the feeling of some snow up here. Nice. Very subtle. This is the way that you create some distance in your painting. You don't want it, you don't want it just chunky all the way through. That's very very easy thing to do when you're going quick is just make it chunky, you know what I mean? No soft edges, just throwing up there. All one tone, all one harshness. You want it to be very artistic and loose and have some nice, beautiful, I don't know, have some nice, beautiful little shapes and, and opposing sharp angles and fuzzy angles and all that good stuff. There's a nice snow drift in the back. All right, that to me looks halfway decent. Now, to make it look a little better, take some of our mountain color, and what I'll do is I'm going to add a shadow here. There. Mm, look at that. Don't want to take too much of our valuable time on this, but I think that it really helps to add a bit to our painting. Now, what I'm doing here is not something I would recommend doing if you're learning how to paint. That is, you know, the painting's fine. Doing it this quickly isn't something that's good, necessarily unless you just want to give yourself a challenge and you know it's okay if it doesn't come out just right. There. I like this kind of adding a little dark. Maybe where the snow has melted off the mountain somewhat. I don't know, it's kind of cool. All right, good enough. How long have I spent on this? I don't even know if I should look. <laughs> good enough. That's actually really pretty. Let me just add a couple more. Good. All right, four minutes and 30 seconds about on that. Well, okay, let's go ahead and paint in our, let's go ahead and paint in our background tree. So let me just grab a color and just brush it in. And there's our background trees. I'll change to, I've got several brushes. I've actually got a two inch sitting over here just to help mist this area out. Soft. There we go, that mountain should be a little softer in the background, that's good. Okay, now, let me set that one down somewhere. Good. 
Now I want to create just the feeling of a few more trees back there. Let me just take my fan brush. I might just I might just scrub with my fan brush. It might create a little better effect than with another brush given, you know, the time that we want to stick in it. This is a very a very good challenge if you're wanting to see what you struggle with. <laughs> If you want to see what you can do better at, just get in here and rush something. And if it doesn't come out just right, maybe you should practice it a little more. That's kind of what I'm doing here. You can use this as a little bit of a guide to show you what, what you're really strong at and what you need to work on. And obviously, just because you're not, you know, can't paint a super detailed painting quickly, doesn't mean you're not good at a certain element. It's just a, it's just a kind of a fun thing to try. I mean, I'm not recommending anybody go and do this necessarily. <laughs> it's just crazy. I don't even know why I'm doing it it's for you guys. Hopefully enjoy it. You better, better enjoy it. <laughs> there. Okay. Good enough. Now I'd love to see right in here. Oh, you know what I'd like to do? Let me go ahead and take a little sap green, little umber. And I'm going to paint in some trees right here. Take my shop towel again. and just sort of rub this in. What that does is it creates a stain on the canvas and I'll be able to highlight that without it turning muddy. I'm also gonna wipe some of that clear gel off just from that background right there. One thing I forgot to do, which I'll do right now, is add a little blue down here, create a little water. We'll put some reflections and stuff down there. All right, back to, back to what I was doing. Let me just take some some yellow, what I'd like to do is throw a little color up here. Now that's, uh, that brush isn't gonna work because it was too dirty. So I'll grab a filbert brush. When you're painting and your brushes are dirty, you have to wipe them off really good in order to be able to use them again. Otherwise it just creates mud. So that's a good kind of a lesson there. Mm, isn't that pretty? Now that looks kind of silly, but wait, when we, when we wipe it off, it kind of becomes soft in the background which is what we want, then we can layer stuff over it if we choose, or not. I mean, in this painting, probably not, but this is how you would want to treat your background if you're gonna layer something on top of it. There, now I'm also going to, right up here, wipe really good, because I want a tree right here. There we go, get that spot cleared out for the tree. Now, we're gonna go ahead and paint the grass. So I've got my that's not the right brush. <laughs> I've got my filbert brush, which I'll wipe out. And I'm gonna paint in, take a little white, take a little yellow. I'm gonna paint in just right here, the middle of the grass. Oh, that's pretty. See that little mound? Oh, this makes it interesting, doesn't it? And I'm sure you've seen how to do this kind of grass before. We do it, you know, every once in a while. It's kind of a, kind of a nice fun technique. Okay, it's a little darker, a little darker, some sap green. I'm not really using these pre-mixed colors as much as I thought I would, but that's okay. They're there if we want them. And you can do that, you know, you either buy a lot of tubes or do what I do and just mix your own. I like a limited palette and then you just mix what you need and you can mix it ahead of time. No rule says you can't mix it, you know, ahead of time if that's what you wanna do, which maybe it's a good thing, you know? Wiping my brush frequently. Get a little more right there. Of course, you guys know what I'm doing. If you, if you haven't seen this technique before, you can go watch some other videos where I do it. <laughs> I'm not gonna be explaining it real well here, imagine that. All right, let me just kind of overall get an idea where I, where I need to go. I take just a two inch brush and I need to very quickly get a little bit of a rock formation going. Okay, throw some different colors in there. Some reds, some umbers, all that good stuff, black take my palette knife, scrape all that extra paint off, go back to my shop town. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I mean, I know it's really, it's about as quick as you can do an oil painting. But hopefully it's enjoyable, kind of to see maybe what you can do as a beginner. Maybe not this quick, but certainly you can do this painting. This is one that anybody can handle. This is not too hard for you. I don't care if this is your first painting or fourth painting, it's, it's fine. You guys can totally handle something like this and it's maybe good to start somewhat simple and then move up to more challenging. You don't have to jump into the hard ones. 
if you're not already familiar with it, we do have several, several beginner DVDs, which I've filmed, you know, some of them more recent than others, but there's some good techniques for learning if you're just starting in there. So definitely go check those out. I think you'll enjoy them. I think you'll learn a lot and it'll help you advance a lot more quickly than just sort of standing out there on your own trying to figure it out. That's not, not a good way to learn. Follow, follow a tool or training tool of some kind because then it speeds your, speeds your learning along quite a bit. That makes it less frustrating. Did I wipe this off already? I probably did. All right, fan brush. Now I'm going to use a two inch brush because we're, oh, one inch brush. That one will work. <laughs> okay, here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fluff this grass. Generally, I do it with a fan brush. I'm going to do it with a one inch brush. You could use a two inch brush. It's all the same technique, really. I just like the way that this looks. It doesn't look, to me, it doesn't look easy. To me, it looks very, very nice. Looks like you know what you're doing when you do this kind of grass. But yet, it's easy. It's not a difficult thing to do. Right over here, I need some bushes or trees or something. Just use my extra paint to scrub that in. You know, there we go. Just a nice soft edge. See how you can be flexible when you oil paint? Nice soft there. Good. Maybe add just a little more. Yes. That quickly you can go back and make changes. Good. Okay. Wipe that brush out. Nice. Then just keep going right over here. Darker. See, that's nice and dark on the edges. Oh, yeah. Getting some contrast. Getting some life. Good. Rocks. Time to do rocks. I'm going to take my three quarter flat brush. Umber, yellow, ochre, white. Now let's see if we can paint a rock or two. I'm not too sure how these are going to turn out. But we're going to give them a good try. How about if we do that? There. See that? Just a couple rocks. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Just sculpting my rocks. Wipe my brush, go into some of the darks. I've only got one three quarter brush going today. That's really kind of silly. I should have a couple, but that's what I've got. Should go get another one, but you know, there. It often helps whether you're going for some sort of a speed challenge or if you're just painting for fun or anything, whatever you're doing, it helps to have more than one brush. Okay, more than one of each brush, I should say. Get my detail round brush, get a couple strokes of detail just to make it not look quite so sloppy. And that's all it needs, really. A little yellow ochre. Cad yellow, mm, right there's that good highlight. Yes, okay. Blue and white, sorry if I'm not showing you my palette. Create that kind of pretty, pretty look right there. All right, there's our rock formation for today. Clean it up a little with some dark, some black on that one inch brush. Bring it in, you don't want it too bright down there, you want it pretty dark. Good, the other thing I'd love to see happen it's just a couple of what feels like some rocks on this side. Just a couple. You don't need many. Just stick them kind of right there. Almost like a double load. Yes. Quickly changing from one brush to another really kind of helps with the flow. I'm also going to pull down to create a nice dark reflection. Very important. Actually, most of this is going to be reflection of the land. Very little reflection of the sky. Good. And then just a little reflection maybe here and there of just some light. Where's that light coming from? I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you. Okay. Here we go. Time for the, time for the light. we got a tree up there. I'm going to take my yellows and simply scrub in a little bit of a fuzzy soft background to the tree. There you have it. Now that's a good start. Set that brush down. Oh, I'm doing good. I've got a couple minutes for this tree. Literally. <laughs> I must be doing good. Oh boy. If you don't have fun, you're going to go crazy. All right, right up here. I'm going to create just the outline, the feeling of a, of a limb, a leaf, a limb. Ignore what I say half the time when I do this, right? There. Mm, that's pretty, isn't it, though? Isn't that starting to shine? We can kind of create a little, 
I don't know, a little feeling of light. A little feeling of light. It's really kind of pretty. Isn't it? You can just get kind of quiet and relax and just enjoy the slow process of, of painting this tree. No stress, no worries. Just fun, right? Very relaxing. There, it looks good. Any spot you don't like, you can always hit with maybe a different color. There. Oh good, I've got a minute left here. It says, my timer says 15 minutes and 33 seconds. That should be more than enough time to finish, right? No big deal. Take a little sap green and black, throw that in the middle. Good. I'll tell you what, there's our tree trunk. Gotta get it in sometime. Might as well be right the second. <laughs> I may not have another second after this. There. That's actually kind of pretty. Nice and dark. Bring that trunk out, good. All right, now what I'll do is I'll take my shop towel again and just touch it. To kind of bring that painting, bring the paint into the tree a little, mush it in. See that? I'm also removing, this is more removing that extra paint slip, the extra slippery paint on top. There. Very good. Very good. All right, set that down. Grab a little bit of blue. I want to do a couple of what feels like just some blue up here. Nah, sorry about that brush. It's not going to work for this. It's going too, uh, too big. Let me get the little detail round out. Oh, I can't believe I'm painting comma strokes. <laughs> the filbert brush is actually better if you tap it, but I don't exactly have the time to do all of it. And I'd rather have the comma strokes. So there you go, some comma stroke leaves. That's really kind of pretty. Let me grab just a little bit of yellow, white, go with a little more leaf texture right here on the end. It'll create a little more form Stand back, make sure I like it. Actually, it's kind of pretty. A couple of yellow ochre leaves right here. Oh yes, those are, those are good too. I like those yellow ochre leaves. Lots of paint, because now it's got a stick. Nice. Now it's got a stick. And I like that light toward the center, don't you? I think that just adds that extra feeling of, you know, a little extra depth, a little dimension to the painting that it otherwise wouldn't have. Good, and then just a the highlight right here on this end of the branch, on that end of the trunk. A little blue shadow. There, good. One or two hits with the, uh, with the brush to clean it up. <laughs> Every time it doesn't stick, it wastes a little time, doesn't it? Good, okay, and then lastly, let me grab my liner brush and just add in a few blades of grass. I had a, a color pre-mixed because I thought it might come in handy. Sure enough, I, I like that green. You don't have to use a green, you could use a yellow, who knows. You could use whatever kind of fits with the painting. But add just a couple of blades of grass. Helps to clean it up. Grab some dark color. There, add a, a stick in the tree couple of limbs to make it feel a little more detailed. There you go. It's those last touches that people see first, right? They really do. Okay. And that's about it. That's about all we have time for. We are, we are done. But I think this was really fun. It was a good challenge, kind of a fun exercise, and hopefully it gives you hope. That's what I'm trying to do. I want you to see that you can do it. And you can just jump in, enjoy it. Don't do it so quick. <laughs> just practice and have a lot of fun. So I hope you guys really enjoyed seeing this. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching.